Hello. Hello, how are you? Doing well, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Hello. Hello. Hello, folks. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hello, Good evening. hello. Good evening, everybody. Oh, I love when we go on time. Okay. So, Carl, it is exactly six o'clock. Um, there's more people coming in, which we will admit as they you know start um, coming in. But I think we are good to get started. Thank you, Madam President. Good evening, everyone. I am Carl Forbes Jr. and I have the honor of serving as president-elect of the Metropolitan Black Bar Association and the distinct honor this evening of welcoming you all to our uh, annual installation and membership meeting this evening. Um, I also get the pleasure of introducing our distinguished guests, Justice Tanya R. Kennedy and New York State Bar Association President. Andrew Brown. Before I introduce them again, welcome. I'd like to remind you, if you haven't had an opportunity yet to visit our new website, mbbanyc.org, where if you're not a member, you can sign up for membership there. And for any uh, social media for this evening, our hashtags are mbbanyc and mbbaleap. All right. I'll begin by uh, introducing Justice Tanya R. Kennedy, who was appointed this past July as an Associate Justice of the Appellate Division First Department by Governor Andrew M. Cuomo. Justice Kennedy served as a Justice of the Supreme Court in New York County since January 2016 after election in November 2015. She was elected to the Civil Court in November 2005 and thereafter served in Criminal Court, Civil Court, Family Court, as an acting Supreme Court Justice and as a supervising judge of the Civil Court, New York County. She is also a former adjunct professor at Fordham University School of Law, where she taught a juvenile justice seminar for 10 years. Justice Kennedy is a member of the Board of Directors of the New York City Bar Association and past chair of the organization's special committee to encourage judicial service. She is also an executive committee member of the Women in Law section of the New York State Bar Association member of the Committee on Pattern Jury Instructions of the Association of Supreme Court Justices of the State of New York, member of the Board of Overseers of Benjamin N. Cardozo School of Law, where she received her law degree and an, and an advisory board member of Penn State Law. Justice Kennedy is a past board member of the MBBA, and in addition, she serves as past president of the National Association of Women Judges. During Justice Kennedy's term as NAWJ president, the organization convened cutting edge legal education for the bench, bar, and community to address cybersecurity and the internet of things, artificial intelligence, the dark web, and virtual currencies, e-discovery, bail reform, the opioid crisis, mental wellness, dementia in the courtroom, as well as engaging millennials and building a personal brand. After organizing a legislative caucus on Capitol Hill to focus on ensuring a healthy work environment free of sexual harassment, Justice Kennedy led NAWJ in trademarking hashtag V2 in the legal workplace. Justice Tanya R. Kennedy is a frequent speaker at various conferences and she's received numerous professional achievement awards and she is a dear friend of the MBBA. Justice Tanya R. Kennedy, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Just one slight correction call, one slight correction. 
what I meant. <laughs> July 2020. I've already completed one year. Don't don't set me back. The time flies with, with COVID, <laughs> everything. Still March 2020 in my head. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> And now for our introduction of our keynote speaker for the evening, Andrew Brown. Andrew Brown of Rochester, founder and managing partner of Brown Hutchinson, became president of the New York State Bar Association on June 1st, 2021. A NISBA member for 36 years, he was chair of the trial lawyer section and finance committee, vice president for the several seventh judicial district, a member at large of the executive committee and co-chair of the task force on the future of the legal profession in 2010 and 2011. In response to the protests motiva motivated by the murder of George Floyd, Brown was appointed co-chair of the NISBA task force on racial injustice and police reform. He moderated three panel discussions with members of law enforcement, prosecutors, public defenders, and judges that examined the issues contributing to police brutality. The task force will deliver its report and recommendations on how to end deleterious policing practices that disproportionately impact people of color to NISBA's House of Delegates on June 12th. For nine years, Brown was a member of the New York State Board of Regents, which provides general supervision of all educational activities within the state and was vice chancellor of the board since 2017. He stepped down in 2020 to prepare for his role as president of the New York State Bar Association. He's a former general counsel of the National Bar Association, the largest association of attorneys and judges of color in the world. He's a past president of Monroe County Bar Association and the Rochester Black Bar Association. He has served on many other boards and commissions and has also held adjunct teaching positions within the State University of New York. Brown entered law practice as an associate with Nixon Hargrave, Devins and Doyle, now known as Nixon Peabody. He has also served as Rochester's Corporation Counsel, the city's chief legal officer and head of its law department. He has been a mediator and an arbitrator on the commercial employment and complex case panels of the American Arbitration Association for more than two decades. Brown earned his law degree from the University of Michigan Law School and his undergraduate degree from Syracuse University. NISBA President Andrew Brown, the floor is yours. Thank you for joining us this evening as our keynote speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Uh, can everyone hear me? All right, I see some, I see yes, some, we're hearing you. I see some, I see some, uh, some heads nodding. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. And I offer greetings on behalf of the New York State Bar Association. And I see many of my friends on the call. And that's always nice to see. I see uh, many people here from the New York State Bar Association, as well as my friends from the MBBA. And Carl, thank you for the introduction. As many of you know, the New York State Bar Association is made up of over 70,000 members. Our members are around the state. We have members in every state of the country. We have members in over 100 countries around the world. Our voice is well heard. And I am pleased to be the president. Uh, one thing I do wanna correct before I forget, Carl, you read my bio uh, and you mentioned that a report on racial injustice and police reform, reform is to be presented in June 12th. That was presumed, presented in June past. So uh, that bio uh, was written a while ago uh, and that was written and I see Asia Smith on the call who was a member of the task force uh, and also I believe a co-chair of the legislative committee. Uh, and she served uh, in that uh, position extremely well. Uh, you know, this is a great time to be a member of bar associations. I commend all of you for being active members of the MBBA I've been to many MBBA functions over the past years. I also commend all of you who are stepping up to assume leadership positions as members of the board. Again, this is an important point in time to be a member of a bar association. And it's also an important time 
for members of color to be active in bar associations. I know that many of you will take the oath in a short while as new members of the board and the oath that you will swear to includes some of what I also obliged to when I was sworn in as president. And that is to defend and uphold the constitution of the United States and of the state of New York. And let me say, we are facing threats now, threats upon our constitution, federal constitution, the state constitution, unlike what we would have thought possible just a decade ago. You look at the newspaper, look at the nightly news and you, you wonder how can this be happening? Challenges to voting rights. We thought we had resolved that back in 65. Here we're still talking about it, a new assault, a new affront. We're talking about a woman's right to choose. We're talking about assaults on rights around abortion that we thought and had hoped had been settled long ago. That's newly before us. And there are so many other equal rights and challenges that we thought would not be possible in this day and age. Sadly, we are confronting them. And that's why it's so important for us to stand up and to be heard. One of my goals as NISBA president is for people to better understand what it means to be black in America. I'm proud to be black in America. And I hope to use my time to help educate others what it means to be black in America. Sadly, Many, both white and black alike, did not have many opportunities to learn about black history. That's a sad fact. If we fail to teach about our history, we do so at our peril. Our story in America is both sad and uplifting. I say uplifting because it's a story of perseverance. Here we are today on this call having persevered, having met challenges that would not have been put before us if we were white. That's just a fact. I'm not crying about it. That's just a fact. But here we are, we persevered. And so many other people who look like us across industry lines have persevered over the years. So there's much to be celebrated. Many times I have felt the weight of societal prejudices and injustice acutely and personally. The only way that we will meaningful, meaningfully change this is to deal with it head on, address these longstanding and deep seated issues directly. Bar associations are in position to do that. Lawyers are in positions to do that. Each of you is in position to do that. One of my top priorities and initiatives is a task force on racism, social equity, and the law. And I look for two outstanding leaders to take that on this year. And I found them in Taya Grays and Lillian Moy, who will co-chair that task force. It will examine the extent that racism permeates and influences facets of daily life, leading to injustice and inequalities between citizens. There are six committees, criminal justice, economic opportunity and wealth building, education, environmental justice, health and housing that will examine why structural racism is entrenched and persistent. It will explore changes in the law and public policy to attack structural racism and effectuate meaningful societal transformation. There is much work to be done, but I know that collaborating together, we can accomplish much more than we can by ourselves. So I invite the MBBA to reach out to me with ways to partner, to advance the interests and concerns of both of our bar associations. Post COVID, as we continue to get there, we face a time of reflection, a time of renewal, a time to reimagine our highest ideals. Frankly, my friends, the world is more open to change right now than we've seen in a long time. We are in the midst of transformation. 
Lawyers are uniquely positioned to lead the way. This is our moment. We have the opportunity to shape the future of our profession and society like no other time in our past, in our lifetimes. We are in position to influence the box we play in. We must rise to the challenge, embrace the opportunity. We can shape what our profession will look like for the rest of our lives. You can do that, bar associations can do that. Lawyers have to be part of this voice, part of this dialogue. We need your voice. You cannot sit this one out. Lastly, let me say I want to congratulate this year's officers and wish you all the very best in the coming year. These are undoubtedly complicated times, but with strong leadership, hope and commitment, our best days are ahead of us. I know that our collaboration and friendship will persevere and we will emerge from these times wiser, stronger and better. Thank you, my friends. President Brown, thank you for your remarks as well as for your service to the profession, both currently as NISBA president and in all that you have done to this point and will continue to do. Um, given the times we're in, we wish we could be in person. We're I'm going to ask everyone to pause for a moment so we can take a screenshot, best capture the event um, this evening as we can. So Madam President, uh, when you're ready, for that, if everyone who would like to be a part can turn on their cameras and we will pause for a screenshot before moving forward with the rest of the program. Smile. <laughs> Okay, let me take one more because I got to do like two screens. And I'm going to count to three so everybody can smile. Three, smile. Excellent. Okay. We are right. good. Good, thank you. Justice Kennedy, I now turn over to you to conduct the installation and um, administration of the oath of office. Thank you, Paul. First, let me say good evening to all of you. Yes, this is an installation, but may I add a subtitle to tonight's event? Tonight's event is a celebration of Black excellence. I say that because each one of you brings an impressive resume. Leaders, not only in your community, but your respective workplaces and bar associations and community associations. Mr. Brown, let me congratulate you on your NISBA presidency. As you know, I'm an active NISBA uh, member and I look forward to actually meeting you in person. Thank you, Judge. I want to capture two things that you said, that this is the time for Black lawyers to rise to the occasion rise to the challenge and that this is their moment. I wholeheartedly agree with you because now more than ever, black lawyers matter. If we look back over our history, we come from a people that have always taken a little and have done much. We're innovative. We are creative. We have made our mark in every facet of society. 
fetters. So Mr. Brown, I have the faith, I have the confidence that these black lawyers will speak truth to power, give a voice to the voiceless, champion the issues as it relates to voting rights, inequities in housing, finance. We know the situation about COVID-19. So I believe, Mr. Brown, that not only is uh, the NBBA, but the legal community, as well as the community at large, is in good hands with the leadership that I have the honor of swearing in this evening. First, I would like to swear in the board uh, members, and I am going to call them by alphabetical order. Nicole Lester Arundel, also she's a new mother, congratulations to you. Christopher Benz, Eric Cottle, Jomari Crawford, Yvette C. Ennis, Philip C. Hamilton, Kevin B. Jordan, Camille Joseph Varlap, Eric Love, Wayne McKenzie, Inga O'Neill, Asha Smith, Janish, 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 Janish Chate, and if I'm mispronouncing it, I'm gonna apologize and you correct me, uh, Ty, Let's do it again. Janisha Ty, I think I got it. If I, if not, you got it. it. You got it. Wonderful. Thank you. And uh, Merlandi uh, Telford. Hopefully, I pronounced that correctly. If not, please uh, correct me. Now, if you would raise your right hand. And repeat after me. Once I say I, please uh, state your name. I. Wayne McKenzie. Nisha Ty. Nicole. Yvette. Kevin Jordan. Mira Cottle. Do solemnly swear or firm. Do solemnly swear or firm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The state of New York. The state of New York. And the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. And the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. And will abide by the organization's bylaws and that I will perform the duties and that I will perform the duties of a board member of a board member of this organization of this organization to the best of my ability to the best of my ability you are now duly installed as board members of the Met you put your hands down of the Black Bar Association, and I congratulate you. All right. Now, did you get in and turn it on? We will have the officers call Forbes Jr. Do you need to turn it on? Because I was just saying. Someone's unmuted. Camera. Maybe if we can uh, mute ourselves, I'm now going to swear in our officers. Uh, Carl Forbes Jr., President-elect. Amanda Miller, Vice President, Communications. Malika Fulton, Vice President, Programs. Justina K. Rivera, Vice President, Membership. Tanisha McKnight, Vice President, Finance. Chad Lavelle, Vice President, CLE and Professional Development. Paula Egger, Treasurer, 
Chantal Sparks, Secretary, Ariel Allen Stewart, General Counsel. Officers, will you please raise your right hand and repeat after me. Let me just say before I start, uh, you'll state your name and then you will state the actual uh, office that you uh, will assume when the time comes. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, I Amanda Miller. President elect. Justina Rivera, Vice President of Membership. Do solemnly swear or affirm, either or. Do solemnly, Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And defend the Constitution of the United States. The state of New York. The state of New York. New York. And the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. And the Metropolitan, the Metropolitan Black, Black Bar Association. And will abide by the organization's bylaws. And will abide, and will abide by, by, the by the organization's bylaws. And that I will perform the duties of and, and that I will perform, perform the duties, duties of, of and state your position, please. The office of the president elect. Of communications. To the best of my ability. You can put your hand down. Thank you. To the best of my to ability. To the best of my ability. You are now duly sworn, and I congratulate you. Before I bring on this phenomenal uh, woman, uh, the epitome of black girl magic at its best. Uh, your president has given me permission to take some creative license to speak to fellow members, supporters and friends of the organization. As a past president, I know that you will need the support of the membership as well as supporters and friends. A president can't do it alone. She's going to need members, friends and supporters to roll up their sleeves and assist in furthering the goals of the MBBA and to take this organization to even higher heights. So with that, I am now going to take my personal privilege and I got permission and ask all members, friends and supporters to raise their right hands and to repeat after me. I state your name. Eric Cottle. Other than the board members in the offices, if we have members and friends and supporters, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support Anta Cissé Green, president, and I will assist her in ensuring that the MBBA continues its longstanding dedication to furthering justice. So I know that you have your mics off, but I'm confident that you have taken that uh, oath. And so, Madam President, if you're ready, I'm ready because obviously we already know that you possess the talents the skills and the experience for this role. And certainly you have the confidence in knowing that the members, the friends, the supporters will ensure that your presidential term is a uh, success. You have been such a brilliant leader, whether it has been a former board member of the Children's Law uh, Center, a former uh, member of the Board of Trustees of the Urban Resource Institute. I know that you are already making your mark as the senior 
Vice Chancellor for Legal Affairs and General Counsel of the State University of New York. We already know you're ready. So can you please raise your right hand and repeat after me? I, you state your name. I, Antasisa Green. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The state of New York. The state of New York. And the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. And the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. And I will abide by the organization's bylaws. And I will abide by the organization's bylaws. And that I will faithfully perform. And that I will faithfully perform. The duties of the president. The duties of the president. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. You are now duly installed as the president of the Metropolitan Black Bar, you can put your hand down, associations. Madam President, congratulations. Thank you for giving me the honor to swear you in again. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Kennedy. Um, Judge Kennedy talks about black girl magic, but she is the epitome of black girl magic. I know I would not be able to do anything that I have done without her. So we thank her for taking this time to be here today uh, to do our installation as she did last year. And she has been a stark MBBA supporter. She is a lifetime, uh, lifetime member of the MBBA. So thank you so much, Judge Kennedy. I know you got all of these judgely duties that you have to do. Uh, so we respect your time and we really appreciate you being here. I want to take the time to thank um, T. Andrew Brown, president of the New York State Bar Association for your absolutely inspirational words and for being with us here today. Uh, I know your task as president uh, is, is a tough one and we are so thankful to have you as a partner, as a friend um, and as a colleague. So thank you so much for being here today and thank taking you. the time to be with us. It's a pleasure. Um, of course, I wanna thank my Carl Farbs, my president elect, um, who has been an absolutely amazing partner. Um, thank you so much, Carl, for being our MC here today. Um, always an awesome, awesome job. Um, now I can start counting down, right, Carl? He wouldn't let me count down last year, so I'm guessing now I can. You started um, counting down from day <laughs> one. From day one. <laughs> it's been fun. Um, but thank you so much. Carl has always been on my side to tell me yay or nay and, and slap me when, when I need to, you know, just calm down and be pulled back a bit. Um, and then I also want to thank, and I am sure there's going to be a few that um, I am missing, but I want to thank our uh, distinguished, distinguished judges who are here with us today. Uh, Judge Edwina Richardson Mendelson, uh, you have about 50 million hats that you are wearing at OCA, and we are more than honored to have you here with us, and we are honored to have you as a leader who is making a change in our court system statewide. Thank you for your constant support, your words, your presence means everything to us. Thank you so much for all that you do for us, and we appreciate you being here. Our above and beyond, he has been um, has been here with us, I think, from the beginning, Judge uh, Robert Reed, uh, who is also here. Uh, Judge Reed is at every single event. Judge Reed is absolutely amazing. I remember I met him, uh, first time I met him was when I was with Agua, and he is always has been an amazing supporter. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Esther, you can, you can keep me honest. Um, I also want to thank and recognize Judge Deborah James, who is also with us here today, absolutely inspirational. Judge Seth Steed, um, who is with us as well. Um, I know new to the bench sits in the Bronx. We are so happy to have all our Bronx brothers and sisters with us all the time. I'm a Queens girl. It doesn't, but I recognize the other boroughs. I, I know, Asha, you shaking your head like whatever. I always got to represent Queens because we, we get overlooked. And I'm sure Staten Island people is cursing me out also for that, but 
Um, thank you, thank you so much, all of you for being here. Most importantly, I would not be able to do anything that I do as president of the MBBA without the absolutely incredible board members and officers and our staff and cabinet who are constantly, they get my emails um, and I know they are very, very tired of it, but they are never tired to respond. They're never tired to be present and they volunteer their very precious time to be with us, to promote our mission, to help us accomplish our goals and to be there for our members and our community. Without all of you, we would not be able to do any of the things that MBBA does on a daily basis. So thank you for volunteering your time. Thank you for being members of MBBA and always being there for us when we need you. Um, it is, it's because of you that we are inspired to continue to do what we do. Um, I do wanna recognize all of our past MBBA officers, board members and leaders who are here with us today, uh, as well as members, leaders of our sister bar associations um, who have been inspirational um, to us and have been great partners as well. Um, I hope that you are all safe, happy back to school for all the moms and dads. I know you're just as happy as I am to have them all back in school. Um, we have, uh, I, I know it's it's been a lot these past 18 months, really these past two years have, have been, you know, just unprecedented for every single one of us. Um, and while I know we continue to worry about our communities, we continue to worry about um, our family, our loved ones, our students, um, you know, we are praying every day that we can go back to whatever you call a normal life, uh, but a life where you don't have to consistently worry about the loved ones um, that you have around you. Um, I also want to wish everybody a happy Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, please reach out, join all of our sister bar associations this month in celebrating. Um, you know, it, it takes a lot to be a bar association leader and our goal is to try to make sure that we get out and we do what we need to do to, uh, you know, for all of our communities and our, you know, heritage months are very, very important and we want to make sure that we support one another. You know, since joining the NBBA in 2006, I, I imagined a day that I would serve as part of the cabinet of changemakers that sort of would continue to offer the types of opportunities that this institution has always offered me. Serving as your president this past year has been more than an honor and I'm excited for the second year. But I could have never imagined a world where, you know, building a community required a Zoom gala. Lord have mercy. Meeting new members was devoid of a, of a handshake. Looking at you straight in the eye and saying, welcome to the last bar association you will ever have to join. Uh, the virtual world has challenged us and at the same time has given us opportunities we never thought possible. Together with the very, very hardworking and committed board members, officers, um, our cabinet, our volunteers, and especially you, our members, we met the challenge of serving you, the heart of this association. But I would be remiss if I failed to point out some of our wins during this very, very challenging year. It was a tough year but we still did what we had to do, right? And despite the fact that we are constantly deprived of our constitutional rights, we watched, unfortunately, as our brothers and sisters are consistently murdered. You have all suffered emotional, physical, and mental challenges this past year. And while this virtual word has afforded us the ability to be able to do things as a community, as a bar association, we still have had to recognize things that we never thought that we would have to continue to see in this day. But it's because of your ongoing spirit, your momentum and your inspiration that we actually have some wins. Right, as a bar association, the best thing that we can do is to serve you, our members, our supporters, our partners, right? We had the ability in this past year to reach out to even more law students than we ever did in the past. Our pre-law and law student division worked overtime in this past year to not only continue to service New York City law students, but we, had, we worked with law students in Vermont upstate New York. And now, now that 
I'm not an upstater, but now that I am present in this upstate world, right, I recognize the need for us to reach out across the entire state and how important that is. We were able to create partnerships with city governments to serve our communities. We partnered with our sister bar associations and specifically our affinity bar associations to create the affinity bar collective that helped us multiply our ability to service our communities. And I thank all of our sister affinity bar associations for their partnership, their hours of long, long hours of meeting together, brainstorming, and then getting out there and making sure that we're doing what we need to do. We spoke out on the need for more diversity in the judiciary, testified in the New York State Senate about the court's proposal to revamp the court system, a proposal that could have potentially decreased the diversity of the judiciary, but with help of our partners in OCA, we were able to amplify our voice to make sure that we are always emphasizing the need to think about diversity, equity, and inclusion in the courts and all around our community. We coupled our external outreach with improving our internal infrastructure. And you all know, especially all of you lifetime members, longtime MBBA members, the last thing you wanted to do was go to the MBBA website. Right, and God forbid you had to renew your dues, right? That meant a lot of calls for Justina. And thank you to the hard work of our officers. We revamped our website. So now you don't have to have a PayPal account to renew your dues. So if you haven't done one, mbbanyc.org, get on it now. Update your profile, right? So we have been able to do a lot and it's all been because of you. We listened to you, we heard you, we understood what you needed and we worked to make it happen. But as challenging and rewarding as all of this was during this year, nothing beats how steadfast we held on to this community and all the skin in the game to make it flourish. And that's thanks to every single one of you. It, it's, it's so refreshing to be in a community where people care about one another, support one another on a constant basis, all day, every day. And that's why I am so grateful to continue to serve as your president for this second year. Um, I'm very, very excited as I start this last year of my term as your president, as we welcome to induct new leaders I am very grateful for your support and your ideas and happy to report that the state of the association is strong because of all of you. So before we sort of transition into our quarterly membership meeting from our installation, I really want to sincerely thank every single one of you for always answering our call, for always answering our emails, um, even when we don't send it as far in advance as we would like, but you love us for that, right? Um, and for always being there. And for most importantly, you know, telling us when we, need, when we are doing things wrong, when we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing, um, but definitely supporting us. And so before I, I sort of transition, I wanna leave you with this as I do in all of my weekly addresses. I want you to stay strong, continue to support one another and have courage, du courage. What my mother always says to me when, when things are going right and when things are going wrong, stay strong, find that courage and continue to support and one love one another. So thank you to all of you. I am so thankful for everything that you have done. Um, I continue to, you know, ask for your support as we move into, you know, my, what is my last year um, as president, um, but definitely not the end of my tenure with MBBA because this organization means a lot to me and I expect to be here for a very, very long time. Um, as long as Carl um, is, is around and nagging me, I'm sure I'll be here. Um, I'm not so letting you that, go anywhere. So. <laughs> I figured. Um, I do want to thank all, I do want to thank all of you for being here. Um, and I want to now take this time to, as you all know, we typically have our uh, quarterly membership meetings. Um, 
you know, we, we like to start in September really with just talking about what we have done, what we've been able to accomplish, and then talk to you about, you know, what's, what's coming up. Um, we are happy to be able to continue a lot of our long-standing programs uh, that we started years ago with, you know, some of my predecessors. Um, and so with that, um, I sort of want to share, um, you know, just go through and share with you first. I know we have seen our uh, board members inducted this evening by, by Judge Kennedy. Um, one of the things we do on an annual basis, even though we may you know, elect a couple of new officers or a couple of new board members, our annual installation uh, sort of marks for us the beginning of the bar year and an opportunity to really connect with you and make sure that you know who your leaders are. Um, so I wanna take a second, if I can figure out how to share my screen, hold on. All right, so I want to um, take a second to just go through with you um, and make sure that you know who your, who your bar leaders are, um, because they're the ones who really make everything happen for us. And they're the ones who I always am, am so grateful to be able to um, just reach out to and make sure things get done. Um, some of these, some of these names, you've heard all of these names, but I want to make sure that you, um, you know, can see them visually um, because they will be reaching out to you and they are here for you. We are all here for you to make sure that we are accomplishing the mission of the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. And so our officers and um, especially our board mem members who help make sure that our strategic plan is focused and that we are fulfilling our mission um, you know, making sure that the big picture is, is always our target. Um, they're very important to make sure that these leaders who give up all of their time, um, you know, are recognized and that you know who they are because we are all here to make sure um, that we can provide you with the services that you need and especially to hold us accountable so that we can make sure that we understand what's happening in our communities and we can um, address those issues. Um, so I also want to take this time, um, I, I think they're all here, um, so these are sort of our, our hidden gems, um, our leadership support, our chiefs of staff and, and administrators, so every time you see an email or you see a social media post, um, they are the reason that it happens, uh, Esther, Jeremy, and Patience. Um, uh, Jeremy is currently a 2L um, at Penn Dickinson Law, and so he gives his time very generously, not too generously though, Jeremy, uh, to make sure that we get done what needs to get done. So thank you so much for all of your support. So I also want to take this time, so I think many of you know that last year when I took on this position as president, my theme was to leap into excellence so we can amplify the power of the black bar. And LEAP as an acronym stands for lead, engage, advocate, and partner. These are all different arms that we have been focusing on to make sure that we can continue to uh, lift the MBBA up to the next level. Right, because we understand as a 38 year old organization, uh, our mission is that much more important now than when we were first founded. And it's our goal to make sure that we are always focused on uh, you know, the things that are important to you. So as we go into this second, uh, this second year, um, I want to make sure that we continue to focus on all of these all of these factors. So we're continue to, continuing to look at increasing leadership opportunities, um, you know, upgrading people to lifetime members. So you know we're coming for a couple of you. Um, well, all I can say is if you sign up as a lifetime member, you pay your bar dues once and you do not have to pay them again for the rest of your life. So it is an absolutely amazing investment that I encourage each of you um, to, to take on. And Justina will, I'm sure, reach out to all of you uh, to make sure that happens as our VP of membership. Uh, we are going to focus on advocating all right, for, for our community and making sure that we are doing what we need to do for for all of our for our community members right and community members when we look at not just our um, immediate community but again as the pandemic has shown us we have to be more flexible we have to reach out further and wider than we have in the past 
And so we're gonna to continue to advocate. We are um, in really in the next couple of weeks, as a matter of fact, going to be taking you know, positions on certain things that directly affect not just the black community, but the black legal profession. Um, things that you know we think need to have happened um, maybe a, a while ago, uh, but they are positions that we have not taken in the past as a bar association. But because of the way that it directly affects our Black legal community, there are things that MBBA can no longer be silent on anymore. And so you will see those things come out from us, and we will be reaching out to you to to ensure that you are able to support us. Um, and lastly, just to continue to partner. So I love to be able to, you know, just be as transparent as possible and let you know what we are focusing on and what my personal objectives are as your president, as a leader of this amazing organization. I think it's very important for me to let you know what I have seen and what I intend to focus on during my tenure to make sure that we continue to hit the milestones we need to hit in order to continue to uh, fulfill our mission. Um, so we are one of the things that the board wants to see is to add to our, um, you know, to, to our portfolio of academies, in addition to the Judicial Training Academy, um, to, to continue to have our Leadership Academy, um, which will provide our members with the soft skills that they need to advance in their profession. Um, new to us is going to be an in-house academy, which will focus on letting, you know, those of you who have, uh, you know, the aspiration to become in-house counsel or ultimately a general counsel provide you with the substantive and soft skills that you need to create a path for yourself to get from point A to point B. And most importantly, a public interest academy. We recognize that there are issues and topics that are specific to those who serve in government or at nonprofits that we need to address. And we understand that you know there's a lot that we can do so we will be looking for your help to make sure that our leadership training programs right are targeted at what you need um, we will also continue to advocate for our communities um, engage each and every single one of you to ensure that we're continuing to meet your needs uh, as we said we we saw that it was time for us to really address them the, the the website because it was preventing us from being able to really speak to you and to connect to our members during these, this virtual um, world that we are in now. Um, and lastly, I, I would be remiss if I did not thank all of our partners who have been able to help us you know, get to this point. We have completely rebuilt the way that we envision uh, you know, partnership. Uh, not just with law firms, but with corporations, with government, um, you know, government entities, and also with individuals, and more importantly, with our solo and our small firms. We recognize the struggles that you go through. Your practice is very different, and there are certain needs that we need to focus on. And I'm very happy that we have a slate of leaders who understand what you're going through and have specifically been targeting your needs in order to be able to provide you with the services that you want and have been asking for. And we do all of that through our committees, our sections, and our divisions. Um, and so last year, when we talk about revamping our internal uh, structure, we added new committees, we added new sections and divisions, we revamped them, we paid attention to what it was that you were asking us to do, and we wanted to make sure that we were focusing our structure in the way that we wanted. So with our new committee sections and divisions, we also revamped um, the opportunities for people to become leaders. And so you have, you have seen them, but I wanted to also make sure that I highlight the leaders, right? So these are again, volunteers who have taken their time to, to sit as chairs, vice chairs and secretaries of all of our respective committees, sections and divisions. And without them, we would not have been so successful in this past year. When I tell you they do, they're, uh, they're, they have monthly section meetings, where in addition to just talking about the needs of the members, they also bring in speakers to target specific topics, right, that the members have been asking for. Um, I have some sections that have been meeting, um, not just on a monthly basis for each of their particular sections, but they have advisory and leadership committee meetings to address their agenda. 
And, you know, I have to big them up because they were one of our, one of the winners of our section of the year last year. Uh, our family law practice section has been absolutely phenomenal. And we will have an opportunity to speak to, uh, you know, hear from Celia Denman in a little while to talk about some of the things, you know, that they are envisioning for this past, um, this upcoming bar year. Um, and then of course we have the leaders of our divisions that focus on, you know, not just those that practice in particular areas, but, you know, if you're a solo or small firm, our paralegal and legal professionals, uh, many of you know that, especially if you're at a law firm, you have paralegals, legal analysts, legal assistants. These are all of our legal professionals who help support us to do what the attorneys need to do. I know that when I was at a law firm, it was the paralegals that taught me some of the substantive law that I needed to know, but more importantly, that gave me a whole litany of the unwritten rules that I needed to abide, abide by in order to be successful in my position at the law firm. So we are very happy to be able to have a division um, for paralegals and legal professions, you know, to, to show them that we understand the importance of their role in the legal profession, that they are needed, they are supported, and that this bar association is also their bar association. Um, so I thank all of our leaders, and you will be hearing from them um, within the next couple of weeks as they all launch their calendars and start to promote each and every single one of uh, their events. So before I hand it over to uh, Celia in a second, um, I just wanted to emphasize again, because this just took um, a lot of time, some of the things that, that we were able to accomplish this past year. Um, and I also wanted to especially highlight our website refresh because um, it is a really big milestone for the MBBA. And we now have a website where you can log in with your LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. What is the other one? Instagram. Yeah, I don't do the gram, um, but these are, you know, it, it may seem like a small, um, you know, a, a small um, enhancement, but it's big, right? Because we all know that, you know, social media tends to lead our lives. And if you can log into a particular website with your social media tags, um, that makes life a lot easier. Um, and especially with my um, old brain, if there's one less password that I have to remember, that makes it even better. Um, it's a user-friendly password uh, platform. It has member forums, um, which I think you are, you know, a lot of you are familiar with. So if you have a question, whether it be a substantive question or, you know, you're just looking for some, some um, you know, someone to help you brainstorm, we have member forums where you can log in and ask your question to, you know, the alternative dispute um, resolution section or, you know, the trust and estate section uh, so that you can get answers um, for yourself. There's also private messaging. And when you go online and look at our membership profile, you can, you know, find Carl Forbes because he's a real estate and trust and estates professional and you can private message him, right? Um, and connect with him directly. Um, this has not only created a much better user interface on the front end, but I can't tell you how many hours it has helped us in the back end. Um, and especially for our VP of, um, of membership, it has made Justina's life a lot, lot easier. Um, so we really encourage each and every single one of you to use this platform and also to give us feedback. Right, so while we launched it this time last year, we are continuing to enhance the, the website on a daily basis. Um, and so we welcome your feedback and wanna know, you know, how are we doing and what are we missing? Um, and so we can, you know, try to look into those enhance, enhancements. Um, one of the things I'm most proud of that we were able to accomplish last year was the first journal for the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. Um, you know, this is this is something that we have been thinking about, um, trying to sort of brainstorm to figure out how can we get more information out there to our members, to our partners, to our communities. Um, how can we collaborate with you know some some of our friends in in other professions, um, and also just how can we provide our members with different opportunities to improve and advance their professional development, and while. This is a scholarly journal, but it's not a, you know, law review note journal. So we're not looking for 500 footnotes, right? We recognize that what we need is a practical venue 
where we as lawyers could provide advice to one another. So if you have been able to, you know, put together the, the best M&A checklist that will help a first or second year, right, get through uh, doc review, um, or due diligence, right? So send us that. Send us that checklist with a little blurb, and let us know why that checklist is, you know, is a is a great practical tool. Um, we're also looking for editors. We have absolutely amazing editors or articles editors uh, who help us. And this is a way for them to not only stay on top of what's happening with the law, right? Because we see the articles coming in, um, but also gives an, an opportunity to, you know, flex their writing and editing muscles. Um, I always say I'm a terrible writer, but I'm a great editor. And this is an opportunity, right? To be able to, 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 to do that, especially for law students. For all of you mentors and sponsors out there, please let your law students know that there are opportunities with the MBBA Leap Journal uh, for them to be involved, to uh, you know, um, to to write and to help edit. Um, and I think it's it's a great way for us to be able to also just gather all of the history of the MBBA um, in at least one centralized location. Um, hopefully there'll be more as, you know, Carl, Carl works. One of Carl's goals is to really get the MBBA history down. And so this is at least one way that we can get that project started. And so we really do rely on all of our past, uh, you know, our past volunteers, our honorees, our officers and our board members, you know, um, we will be soliciting all of your help to, to you know, get us there. Um, who knows, maybe we could have a book, the MBBA, The Journey. Um, and sell that online, you never know. Uh, but our uh, VP, I think she's on here. Amanda Miller is our Vice President of Communications and she is the um, lead editor for the journal. Um, one of the other things that we have been able to do with our VP of Finance is to use the Leap Journal to partner with, um, you know, with our solo and small firms and also with, um, you know, our non-legal professional businesses. So corporate entities out there who want to target the black community, um, this has been very appealing for them because the MBBA does have a strong stature as a leader in the New York City black community. And there is no better place for you to be able to promote black businesses um, than the Leap Journal. Um, and so we really invite you to, um, you know, take a look at the journal. The next issue will be um, coming out. We did take a hiatus during the summer. We were trying to, you know, get that third one out for the first year, um, but we'll be ramping up um, the, the new issue um, shortly. Um, one thing for all of you members, I really, really hope that you will reach out to us, let us know what is happening in your life. Uh, we use the journal as well as our social media and our weekly newsletter to highlight your achievements. So I wanna know when you got an award, I wanna know when you get promoted, I wanna know when you move to a new position. We have so many things happening in our lives. We don't toot our own horns, but the MBBA will toot for you. So please, send us an email, let us know what is happening, let us know what's happening with your friends um, and all of your colleagues so that we can get out there and we can celebrate you and have everybody else celebrate you as well. Um, and you know, the Leap Journal is another way for us to be able to do that. So I know I said I'm gonna hand this over to Celia, but the one thing I do want to uh, make sure before people start logging off, save the date. Our what is this, our 38th gala um, is gonna be May 20th, 2022 in person. I know you were all sweating last year because we couldn't be sweating in person right at the after party, uh, but please save the date. We hope to uh, have some of the names of our honorees um, you know, out within the next few weeks. As you know, we, we try to honor some of the most amazing um, legal minds. Um, you know, during our during our gala, as well as honor, you know, provide scholarships to our law students. And so we are very excited. We had to cancel in 2019. Last year, we did it virtually. And although it was absolutely wonderful, we want to see you all in person, right? We want to party with you. And um, we really want to make sure that we bring, um, we bring everybody back. And so the theme for our gala this year um, is return to the Black Bar. Right, we have sort of been in hiatus, 
virtual for a number of years, for two years now. Um, and so we're coming back and we're coming back strong. So we wanna make sure that you are all there to witness it, to be there, to share and to celebrate with us. So please put that on your calendar. If you need me to send you a calendar invite, don't play cause I will send it. You still gotta buy your ticket though. Uh, but please save that date because we are really, really excited to be back um, in person. Uh, lastly, before I hand it off to, to Salia, I want to make sure I highlight for um, all of you, you know, some of our um, upcoming programming. Um, if you are not awake at Saturday at 9 a.m., you should be so that you can join us in our MBBA Moves virtual training. Uh, Jay Marist has been doing this for us uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. He has a strong following. Um, what is it called? The, the, the Melanin Militia is what they are called. And they go strong every Saturday at 9 a.m. on the dot. Um, and so there's a couple of people on here who have you know, been strong followers. So I really encourage you to, to get up with us on Saturday morning. Um, our Leap Career Forum for all of you law students and young attorneys out there, if you have not yet figured out you know, what you wanna do or you are curious about a particular area of law, join us every second Wednesday of the month where we will talk to uh, you know, select attorneys in particular practice areas. Uh, the next one is gonna be October 13th. Our October and November Leap Career Forum sessions will be focusing on uh, professionals in the diversity, equity, and inclusion um, area. And so we will talk to, you know, those at law firms, we will talk to coaches, uh, you know, those um, diversity, equity, DEI professionals um, in, in the corporate arena. And so we really encourage you to, to come out um, and talk to us. And we'll also have uh, career services um, will also be with us from um, the local New York City law schools. Um, our Ted Jones trial advocacy workshop is, is coming back. Um, again, because of the pandemic, um, we delayed it for a year, but we will be back um, in October. Um, so look out for that. The Judicial Training Academy, we are doing our work third annual Judicial Training Academy. We graduated 21 individuals in uh, 2019. Uh, we had about 19 last year and we are looking to increase our uh, cohort of candidates. So if you have been practicing for 10 years or more and you are ready to take that step to start preparing yourself, um, you know, to, to take the bench, to pursue a career on the bench, please make sure you join us at the Judicial Training Academy. Um, it will start in January, but we will launch in October the application um, for you to apply. Uh, lastly, our uh, Judge Priscilla Hall Leadership Academy will also be starting in January, and we hope that you will um, join us for that. Most importantly to the Judge Reeds and the Judge Mendelsons and Stathes and James, we will be celebrating you as we do every single year at our fifth annual Black History Month Judges Celebration on Thursday, February 3rd. Uh, hopefully closer to that, we will determine if it will be in person or virtual. Um, again, we are hoping it's going to be in person, but this is an opportunity, again, for us to show you just how much we um, cherish the work that you do, um, you know, as representatives on, on the bench. Um, and we could not do a lot of this without you. Um, so, and I know how important it is to get those dates out to you, too. So we're definitely going to make sure you get those, those invitations um, so that you can be there um, to be honored. So those are just a, a few of the key um, um, you know, some of the, the, the key programs that are coming up. Um, so I wanted to make sure um, that we are all there. Now I got to figure out how to stop sharing. I know, I know, do the, the old share and there it is. Okay, I got it. I got it. Um, so thank you so much. So I, I know Carl and, and Justina have sort of been, um, you know, putting in all of the, the calendars and, um, you know, and the events, if you are ever looking for what is happening, um, please feel free to visit our, our website. It's a lot easier to find things, um, but our upcoming events is all listed on there. And now you can register for everything right on the MBBA website um, because we've made things um, a lot easier. So with that, I would love for, um, Celia, are you on? Oh, I see you. Hello, my dear. Um, Hello, how are you? 
I'm good. Thank you so much for joining us. So Celia Denham is, um, you know, the one of the leaders of the family law practice uh, section. Um, and I would love for her, Celia, let me, I, I'm, I hope you're able to share. If not, I will happily just pull up your, um, I can, I can share for you and you can just let me know when you want me to sort of move forward. Thank you. Does that work? It does. Okay. All right, so with that, um, I present Celia Denman. Thank you, Anta. First, I'd like to congratulate everyone who was installed today as officers and boards of, um, and the board of directors. I especially have to um, send a special shout out to our co-chair, Yvette C. Ennis, who was installed in the board of directors today. And we are extremely proud of you, Yvette, and it was well-deserved. My name is Celia Denman, and I am the vice chair of the family law section chair of the Article 10 subcommittee and a private practitioner focusing on appellate advocacy. And I'm also a visiting professor at New York Law School for the year. Um, I first want to start out by thanking the MBBA leadership for voting us as section of the year for 2020-2021. We were truly, truly honored and surprised um, for being recognized with that award. And we wanted to, as a section, thank you for um, recognizing our hard work this past year. Um, for last year, well, actually, if you can go to the next slide, I apologize, Anta. First, I would like to um, introduce to you our executive board for the family law section. Um, our, we have two co-chairs, Yvette C. Ennis and Ernestine Mings. Yvette, as I indicated, was sworn into the board of directors today. And um, Ernestine J. Mings is a senior matrimonial um, associate at Blank Rome. Um, serving as vice chairs this year would be myself and Asia Scarlett Jones, who was pulled into the position after showing us what a hard worker she was last year, um, and Lissa M. Daly, who um, is serving as secretary this year also because of her um, hard work and dedication to the section um, last year. So I just wanted to give a very brief overview of um, some of the things that we did last year which um, included programs like um, unconscious bias views from the bench and matrimonial and family law, which was a very well attended event and actually was a segue into us forming a relationship with the second department and office of attorneys for children co sponsoring our program. We also had um, a Article 10 program where we did an overview of Article 10 proceedings, as well as um, uh, a program presented by Ernestine Mings on um, virtual proceedings. Our focus um, this year has been to really recognize what our membership is looking for in terms of diverse programs that they can't find anywhere else. So um, if you can go to the next slide. Thank you. In order to meet our um, programming goals this year, we formed various subcommittees. Our Article 10 subcommittee was already in play last year, as I indicated. Um, and now we have formed a CLE resource subcommittee um, chaired by Monique Hardy, who is a court attorney in Westchester County for um, the Honorable Arlene Gordon Oliver. We also create a family law resource directory subcommittee which is chaired by um, Tanae McKinley Brooks. We recognized that we wanted to create a directory of various panelists um, of our membership and their practice areas so that we had a quick resource to go to when we're, we were planning our CLE programs. We are also this year um, beginning a legislative subcommittee who will be chaired by um, Ernestine J. Mings where we'll inform our members of um, new and upcoming um, laws that are relevant to our section, as well as perhaps um, issue um, our opinion on various legislation um, for family law. We also have a techno technology subcommittee. We are looking for a chair for that subcommittee. So if you are interested, if you are ready to roll up your sleeves and work, then we would invite you to reach out to us um, because we definitely need a chair for that subcommittee. With that being said, <laughs> this year we have a very robust program. If you can please go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So as a Howard um, School of Law alumni, <laughs> I always <laughs> keep in the back of my mind a quote by Charles Hamilton Houston, which is partially, a lawyer is either a social engineer or a parasite on society. 
And that's really in the back of my mind in, in our programming for this year, because we really are seeking to make sure that our members have all of the relevant information and are well versed in the law so that they can provide the best possible representation to our clients. In October, we are recognizing Domestic Violence Month and we are having um, a CLE program that's going to be focused on domestic violence cases and the intersection between family and criminal law, which will be presented by Ken Bunting. Um, we are also, um, we, we didn't get a chance to update it here, but there'll be um, at our general body meeting, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a presentation by our very own Lisa Daly on My Sister's Place, which provides domestic violence um, counseling and, and related services in um, Westchester County. In November, we are having a special needs event, which is very, very near and dear to our hearts. And that event is going to be focusing on representing both children and adults um, in the context of family offense proceedings, child protective proceedings, um, all the way from birth through adulthood. So children who are in foster care, aging out because it's a very special population that needs very specialized care and representation. In February, we are very honored to be joined by the Honorable Kathy E. Davidson, who has recently been um, appointed as the Dean of the New York State Judicial Institute. That will be a joint program with the Westchester County Black Bar Association. We are really trying our very best to reach out to um, other bar associations and work with them in order to provide our, our uh, membership with as much um, diverse programming as possible and just expand um, the amount of people that we can reach. So we're very excited about that collaboration with the Westchester County Bar Association. Um, in March, we are going to be focusing on Article 10s. We're gonna be dissecting Article 10 abuse fact-finding hearings. So for attorneys who are in general practice and don't generally um, practice in that area of law, we will be going from beginning to end. Um, on fact-finding proceedings. In April, we are going to be focusing on father's rights, which is um, very um, dear to us all. And we're just, we're going to have um, likely a judicial panel addressing the various issues that um, affect fathers in the context of family law and matrimonial law. And we plan on rounding out our year with the virtual, virtual affinity bar, family law match, mashup, where we're going to be um, having a networking event with the various um, affinity bar associations in our, in our area in the context of family law. So we are looking forward to um, a very, very exciting year and we are looking for people to work for our section and we hope that you will join us. Thank you, Atta. Wow, and so now you see why they were voted section of the year. Absolutely amazing. Um, I love it. Thank you so much, Celia, for being here. Um, to, to talk to us and to go through that. I agree, just, you know, great presentation. We're really excited. Um, and, you know, all of this is, is a result of having leaders who are, you know, focused and tapped in and really talking to the members to make sure that we are giving you, you know, everything that you need. So thank you, Ernestine, Yvette, Celia, Asia. Um, absolutely great. We're really excited and look forward to, to all of this. Um, so that actually brings us, unless um, Carl officers board, is there anything that I am currently forgetting that I have neglected to bring up, raise? Don't all chime in at the same time now. Well, I have to thank every single one of you. It is so good to see all of your smiling faces. Um, I really wish that I'm really looking forward to us being able to do this you know, in person. Um, as you see, um, the family law section, as well as our other sections, have really you know, revved up a great bar year, but we always need you, we need your feedback, um, we need your attention, and of course, always your, your presence. Um, Justina would kill me if I did not say, please go online and renew your bar association dues if you had not, have not already done so. Uh, if you need assistance, please let us know, reach out, and we will help you. Um, I encourage you to sign up for a lifetime. Uh, membership. Um, if you need a breakdown or like a little layaway plan, call Justina and she'll make that happen as well. 
So thank you again to every single one of you. I really, really um, appreciate all of you. Definitely looking forward to an awesome year. Um, I wanna again, thank our board members. I wanna thank our officers. You were all absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for putting all of your faith in me um, and for helping me to be an absolutely amazing leader. Thank you everyone. Please stay safe, be blessed. And I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Du courage. <laughs>